Hello, this is Miss Kyler, and I'm here to talk to you about AMP by John Updike. I'm going to walk you through it, and we're going to look at some of the literary elements and sort of analyze them a little bit. Please read the story on pages 141 and 145 of your books. Book. Okay, so first of all, we're interested in characterization. How does the author build the characters and develop them because when you start a story you start writing a story you don't really have anything at all to work with besides a blank page we have to take that blank page and develop a living breathing human being that actually a reader can empathize with we think of them as a real human being when we read the story you can picture them and we feel them just as if they were walked right into our living room door okay so sammy is a lot like that He's narrating the story, and we really get to know a lot of what goes on in Sammy's mind. He really comes to life for us. Um, so Sammy's our main character, and then there's Stokesy, his sidekick. Mr. Langle, he's the um, one who owns the store. And then even more conflict is introduced by Queenie and company, these three scantily clad girls who walk into the store and distract Sammy from his duties. Um, so we talk about conflict. Every story, there's a little, there's some kind of problem that needs to be solved. And the conflict is, has to do with protagonist versus antagonist. Now it's important to understand about short stories, literary fiction short stories, is that a protagonist is usually the, a human being, but the antagonist most of the time is not a human being. You know, sometimes there's a human conflict there. However, most often the bigger conflict is with hum um, society, technology, self, or nature, something more than human. Okay? Um, but the protagonist is usually a human being, because remember we're interested in how human beings react under certain conditions. And um, the character and the protagonist drives the story, faces a conflict. Most of the time they have to make a major decision and they come to some kind of major realization, which is an epiphany, and they have goals and change, and, the, and often the protagonist actually changes by the end of the story. It's important to, to understand when you're reading literary fiction short stories is that we're not so much interested in the physical conflict as the mental conflict. We're not going to see a lot of action. We're going to see people thinking a lot and feeling a lot and trying to come to terms with some big idea in their minds. It's going to be more about what's going on inside of them than what's going on outside. Okay? So Sammy is our protagonist and he's 19 years old and that's very important to make that note. You know, if I was annotating it, I would certainly underline the part where it says he's 19 years old because that has a lot to do with the way he views life, the way he's reacting to the situation. It helps us understand Sammy where he is right now. Um, he already has some kind of problem or conflict going on because he's unhappy at his job. And I know that because I, might, I marked the parts where he says that he thought of one lady as a witch, right? And the other um, customers were like sheep, you're just going dumb animals going by in a line. He doesn't even think of them as people anymore. So he's very tired and very unhappy at his job. Um, he is, again, 19. And to make things even more complicated, he becomes distracted by some scantily clad teenage females. So Sammy is really up against a lot in the story. And to make things even worse, he has not yet learned what being an adult really is about. He, he has all that up ahead of him. Responsibility, putting your own wants aside, making decisions not based on immediate desires, but on long-term goals. And even more complicated for poor Sammy, his parents know his boss, whatever he does at that job. If he, whatever action he takes, his boss is going to tell his parents, and the whole town is probably going to be talking about it. So Sammy really is in a tough situation, okay? Um, so we want to understand point of view. So when I talk about point of view, I'm not talking about this is my opinion of the story. Some people get confused there. Point of view is what type of narrator is telling the story. A&P is told from first person point of view. So the first person in our first little um, example here, the far side of the left of the page, a first person narrator is um, one of the characters. So Sammy is the narrator and also a character. So we only see and hear what Sammy sees and hears, and we only 
can see what Sammy's thinking because he is thinking it. He's telling us what he's thinking. Okay. We only know how much Sammy decides to tell us. Um, other stories, the one, other ones that you are reading for your um, analysis could be in third person omniscient point of view. Uh, that's where the narrator is not the character in the story. He or she can see into the thoughts and feelings of all the major characters. Um, very few story, short stories are told third person omniscient. Usually that's in um, novels. But if you want to see an example of third person omniscient, read another story by Kate Chopin, um, the, the Storm. Okay, that one goes from one character to another thought as the story progresses. Third person limited, a lot of short stories are told from third person limited point of view. Um, the story of an hour is one. Um, where are you going? Where have you been? It's another one. Um, this is where this narrator is not a character in the story. He or she can see into the thoughts and feelings of only one major character. So we have this godlike narrator, but they only have access to one person's thoughts. Their psychic distance is close to only one person. Third person objective, if you're doing hills like white elephants, listen up, because that's in third person objective point of view. That's where the narrator is not a character in the story, and he or she can see no one's thoughts or feelings and reports only what is seen and heard like a, a reporter or a fly on the wall, right? The fly on the wall doesn't care what people think or feel. They just say, oh, that's what happened in this world. It's weird. Okay. That's what makes um, the hills like white elephants so complicated is because it's we have no idea what the people are thinking. We only can hear what they're saying. And many times what they're saying is not matching what we think they must be thinking. Okay, we can only guess by what they're looking at or what they say, what they're maybe thinking or feeling. Um, in the AMP, some more, more important things, it's not just that he's a first person narrator, but that he uses present tense, okay? He says, in walks these three girls in nothing but bathing suits. So it's very immediate. It's like the, it's, the story just happened. He just started telling the story right after the events happened, right? It's still probably about 19 years old when he's telling the story. Um, and it's interesting, another little detail that I annotated when I was reading it is in walks these three girls in nothing but bathing suits. Um, it's interesting when he says in walks, because that's a singular verb. And, you know, you say I, uh, actually it's in walks. So he walks, she walks. You never say three girls walks, right? But he says, in walks these three girls. It's almost like you say, in walks a monster, right? In walks Godzilla, in walks King Kong, in walks my mother. You would never say, in walks these three girls. It's like the three girls are just one entity to him. And also it's kind of the way you might talk if you weren't really thinking about being grammatically correct. So one, it creates that sort of conversational style. And two, it gives you the idea that three girls are one unit and not necessarily three individualized girls at the time. As he goes through and looks at them more clearly, then he um, starts saying, okay, that's Queenie and that's the chunky one. Um, again, it's present tense. I'm in the third checkout slot, my back to the door. So I don't see them until they're over by the bread. Okay, it's very interesting. Also look at the closing lines. It's interesting how this kind of switches. So these are the kind of details I'm having you to look at. I look around for my girls, my girls, right? But they're gone, still present tense. There wasn't, oh, all of a sudden we shifted from present to past tense. That's really interesting. There wasn't anybody but some young Mary screaming with her children about some candy they didn't get by the door of the powder blue Falcon station wagon. Looking back in the big windows over the bags of peat moss and aluminum lawn furniture stack on, stacked on the pavement, I could see Langle in my place in the slot, checking the sheep through. His face was dark gray and his back stiff as if he just had a shot of iron, an injection of iron, and my stomach kind of fell as I felt how hard the world was going to be to me hereafter. Okay, so the first part was all you know, very upbeat, very present tense. All of a sudden, now it goes to past tense, like he's starting to tell the story, he's starting to think about what happened. It's not until that point that he really is thinking about um, all, you know, looking back at what happened earlier. Very interesting. Again, this is a point where he has this epiphany. This is where the whole following action is right here in this last few lines of the story. A life-changing realization, an epiphany. So looking back in the big windows, I could see Langle in my place in the slot, checking the sheep through. 
His face was dark gray and his back stiff, as if he just had an injection of iron. And my stomach kind of fell as I felt how hard the world was going to be to me hereafter. And the message there is, welcome to adulthood, Sammy. It's not going to be easy. You have to make hard decisions and you have to do, think about other people besides yourself in this world. Okay, the setting is also important in this story. So the fact that it's the 1950s is important because that gives us the idea that it's a time and place that's more conservative standards. Today, if people walked in with a, the type of bathing suits they wore then, it wouldn't be that shocking. In the 1950s, it would be more so. Um, the grocery store is set near the beach, which gives the opportunity for these girls to walk in dressed as they are. And it also gives a hint that here he is stuck in the store when he'd rather be just a few miles down the road and playing in the sand and the, and the, and the water, right? Um, it's a crowded store with lots of tired, cranky customers. Already that whole mood is set with that atmosphere. And as the story opens, it's been a long, hard day. Probably hot and tired and not a lot of air conditioning at that time. Okay, let's think about plot. Plot is how the story is arranged. So we start out with a status quo, something happens. The protagonist has to commit to a goal. Um, there's rising action that's been more and more complicated till we reach a crisis point where we have to, we're forced to make a decision or do some kind of action. So there's that climax, climax which leads to an epiphany. Sometimes we seize the prize, sometimes we lose the prize. And that leads to the rapidly falling action in the AMP very rapidly. And then we have a new status quo. The character changes, the world's different somehow. And here's a plot of AMP real quick. Okay, the status quo, we get no, it's been a long, hard day for Sammy. He's 19, he'd rather be at the beach. And then something happens. There's three scantily clad girls walk in. Okay, things get more intense as Sammy becomes more interested in trying to examine and understand the opposite sex than he is in actually doing his routine and helping the everyday customers. The crisis point. Lengel confronts the girls about their lack of clothing. He's very strict with them. You know, rules are the rules. Climax. Sammy quits. Big heroic gesture. He thinks... Of course, the girls don't really care. He thinks they all are staring at him. Unfortunately, they could care less of what happens to Sammy. So the following action, he does not win the prize. The girls are gone. And all of a sudden, he realizes the world goes on without him. New status quo, he realizes that hasty decisions have consequences and being an adult is not an easy thing at all. Okay, pretty tough stuff. Thanks for listening to this and start looking at your own story with the same eye for detail when you look at these elements. Thanks and have fun. Bye.